All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use SSDT to create a derived column. Now, SSDT, if you're even if you're uh, not new to SQL Server, you're thinking, mm, and if you haven't used SSIS in a while, thinking, what, what's that? Well, that's the new name for basically uh, SSIS. These are SQL Server uh, data tools now. And we can see that down here, that cute little button even though it's a Visual Studio shell, has been since 2005, uh, back when it was called bids. So we open that up. Now we need to create a new project. And we need a new, we get, we can select from the different projects to create. If we're gonna create a cube, we can go to, uh, well, you get it, all right, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? So let's go down here, let's say derived, one on D-E-R, not Drive column example, and we're going to create that. Okay, and it's going to give us our Kansas to play with. And there, we obviously want to rename that, but I won't go through the uh, the very basics. Uh, I will do that later. I think I'm going to create a series on SSIS, so uh, this will be one of those videos. However, I'll, I'll like I said, I'll go back and do the basics later. So now. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's click on our favorites. And we're gonna, we, these are the two tabs we're gonna spend most of our time in, right? Control flow, data flow. Let's drag a data flow task on here. Let's click on the data flow task. And now we could use the, the assistance if we want, or we can use the, just the regular old drop on there and do it yourself. I like the drop on there and do it yourself. I don't need the assistant. I don't, it's not that I don't need it, it's just I, I prefer this. So let's go find an Excel file for us to import into a table. That looks pretty good. So now we've got a selected table, all right? So we need to create that sheet. There we go, we just created the sheet. Let's preview our data. Okay, clean data, that's nice. Now we need to drop a destination on here. Oh, wait a minute, no, before we do the, well, we can, do it however we want. If we wanted to put the destination on here, we could do that. However, right now we're going to drive a uh, derived column task. So we drive our derived column task on here. We hook that up. All right. These are called constraints. Press it in constraints. These little doohickeys. We'll click on that. And now we, there's there's two ways we can do this. We have it's variables, and we could also do it with uh, some functions. If we wanted to, let's go create a date every time. Uh, let's create a scenario where every time this job runs, I want to put a date on that import so I know exactly what rows and when they were inserted in this destination table. All right, so let's go to, and to do that, we'll use uh, a, a system called, uh, I think it's called, it's, what is it, system time or something. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, create start time. Container note. I think it's called system start time. Okay, good. Uh, let's put that there. Let's call this derived column. Uh, date inserted, all right. And we can add a new column or we can overwrite an existing one. We can replace if we wanted to. Right, we want to create a new one. It's going to give us uh, the date. We're going to say, okay, this is actually very straightforward, isn't it? It doesn't get much easier than dragging an expression on there. And then, uh, it, you know, most of the work's basically done for us. So we say, okay, now we need a, a destination. So let's drop a, drop on here a, uh, no source. We need an OLDB destination. That is our, our SQL destination of choice. We'll drop in our constraint. All right. We'll click on our our editor. Now we need a, a connection. So we have one localhost fun. Yeah, that's the name of my. Uh, this localhost is a database. Fun is the table. That's great. We can use that. Now, I, does a table exist? Yeah, I think it does. Oh, sorry. Let's go here. Yeah, it does exist. All right, so we should probably overwrite. Let's take a look at the mappings 
Now let's come back up here and start to ignore. No, no. What if we were to ignore this? It, it looks fine, right? You're saying, well, well, Mike, it looks like it's going to run fine. And you know it will. Let's open up Management Studio first and take a look at that table. So there's fun. Let's take a look at the new query. It's address, right? So let's do a select all from address. What do we have? It's empty. That's good. That's what we want to see. Now let's run our package. So you can run the package a few ways. You can come up and hit our little little green run. You can right click on the package and execute it. You can right click on the canvas and execute the task. However you want to do it. It's really a, a totally a, a thing of a matter of preference. So let's see what happens if this runs, if it will run. All right, so it did run. It put 12 rows from the Excel file into uh, our, our table. However, let's go take a look if it did what we wanted it to. Nope, it did not insert the start date. Well, why is that? Well, I think you probably saw a little bit of why that is a minute ago when we decided not to choose or map, I should say, the destination. Kill this table, uh, truncate, truncate. First, you've got to get the syntax right before it'll work. Let's come back to that. Let's stop it. We can't edit this when it's in this uh, in the runtime mode. So we stop it. We come back here, and now we need to map it. So let's um, come back to our mappings, and we'll see that the, the destination column did edit. Right, the the uh, drive column transformation editor did put it there. However, we didn't map it, so we need uh, to tell it the date inserted goes to start date. All right, now let's run it and see if it gives us what we want. All right, that looks looks pretty much the same. And there we go, it gives us exactly what we want. Now, there are, there is another way to do this. All right, that's actually a pretty straightforward way and I really like this I think every table um, at least from a data a DBA's point of view uh, every table should have uh, one of these kind of time stamps uh, basically when when the rows were inserted um, okay let's go back for a second to our package to get out of the get back to our canvas out of the bug mode and now we can look at our derived column what if we, is there another way to do, do this other than the, the the system start time? Yeah, we actually, just like you would if you were defining the table, you could use get date. All right, and it will do the exact same thing. So we give it our, our get date, we say okay. Now let's run it again and see what happens. All right, well, it looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? I don't like these. So let's give me more room. Now we can see it much better, much prettier now. All right, so let's stop it there and let's go back and look at our, so this is what we what we had before. Uh, let's take a look and there we go. So we've got the exact same thing. So uh, again, this is something you can also do if you were to create and add this Add this field and then put a, the, the gate the get date function uh, associated with that field. However, since we're talking about SSDT and we're specifically talking about the derived column task, um, we really wanted to see what options we had available for us to do it this way. And either way, like I said, it does the exact same thing. And that is pretty straightforward. And it's a, a a function or a task that you're going to use a lot in SSIS. All right, thank you for watching.